So um, I can see you, Martin. Can you hear us? I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. okay. Perfect. Yeah, you look great. Gosh. Oh my God, this lighting is beautiful. Yeah. I need this lighting in my house. This is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Martin, um, you're going to demonstrate a uh, robotically placed um, sacroiliac or pelvic screw. Yeah, so um, I believe for, for this demonstration, it's going to be demonstrating uh, S2 ALR iliac screw placement, especially in the setting of deformity. Now, um, for the trainees in the room or, or the younger surgeons who are on this call, you may not remember a time where placement of S2 ALR iliac screws was, was quite difficult. And again, I've placed them freehand. I learned how to place them freehand under fluoro assist, under nav, making sure that everything lines up very well. And so there, there are times, and there, there was a time, where this was actually quite difficult. Now with robotic systems, this just becomes like another mundane screw, essentially as it should be. Because as the foundation for your deformity, it should be straightforward, and you shouldn't be going in and out and, and troubleshooting and, and repositioning. This should be the perfect screw that, that first time around. And so um, while it is uh, fairly straightforward, there are just a few tips that, that I certainly learned over the years as we try to figure out how to make this um, you know, a, a good workflow. Um, so you can go ahead and send it to the trajectory. So for, for this uh, particular cadaver, head is over here. I'm going to be placing a right-sided um, S2 ALR iliac screw. Um, and for this particular robotic system, the first thing that's done is going to be the uh, navigated uh, cannula and dilator. Right, so you can see here a good apposition of the trajectory of that S2 AI screw. The next is going to be uh, the decortication drill. Right, so this drills down that path, and you can see good uh, navigated guidance down the cannula and into that space. Next step is going to be uh, the tap. So this is a sharp, you can use a 4.5 or a 5.5 tap. The idea behind this tap is to get across the SI joint. So for typically for my S2 AI screws, I use a, a double tap technique. So the first tap is a smaller tap. So for this one here, you'll see, uh, again, crossing of that tap to make sure it goes across the SI joint. Just like in all of the demos, what you want to be sure is that all of your tools um, start in the air so that um, you don't sky, right? I mean, sky was such a, a, a feared issue and complication in all of the earlier techniques. So I start everything in the air, down the cannula. Next is switching to a larger tap, right? So once that 4.5 or 5.5 or five, five tap goes in, I upsize to the next size tap, which is undersized. So if I'm using, say, a 9.5 screw, I'll put an 8.5 tap, 8.5 screw, 7.5 tap, and so on. And so this is essentially the undersized tap that will go in just before the screw. Again, you can follow on the navigation to make sure that you travel across that SI joint. And I essentially tap nearly the entire thing, right? So especially if you're putting in a long, uh, a long screw, you make sure that this is uh, providing that path for that screw. And then the last is the screw itself. Now, as you'll notice, I, I do everything on power, right? So it's certainly up to your comfort. Um, but for me, you know, especially for surgeon longevity, power is, is really the way to go to make sure that um, you know, everything is, is in line with a very smooth delivery of force. And you can see here the guidance of the robotic arm with placing of the screw. Now, like I mentioned, you know, it, it seems almost mundane and straightforward, which really uh, is a testament to how uh, really nice robotics is to place what was essentially a very, very difficult screw at one point, where now you can place this screw, uh, detach, the drivers, and then move on with, with the rest of the surgery, right? And that is, uh, that is essentially it. So as I showed through some of my cases, this is just one S2 AI screw. If you're doing a very complex revision, you can put in two S2 AI screws or three S2 AI screws. Um, and it's just uh, purely in planning the robotic system to make sure you have space and that everything lines up with the rest of your deformity. Martin, I think that took too long. I, I think that was three minutes. <laughs> I was talking so. too much. It's, it's, my, uh, it's my fatal flaw in the OR. I talk yeah. too much in the OR, and I'm the reason why my OR times are, uh, are lengthening. Dr. Arlay just emailed uh, Penn back and rescinded his um, retirement. So <laughs> he's, he's going to come back. That's wonderful. Any, any questions I can answer? Uh, congratulations, it goes so fast, okay, so you, you usually I say screw shouldn't take more than 30 seconds to put in open, but they, I think you go faster than anything else. 
You know, it's, it's just, you know, I, I remember I, I did my fellowship with Larry Lenke. He taught me how to freehand S2 AI screws. We did them in, in nearly every single case. And then when I started doing them myself, when I first started, I freehanded in my own S2 AI screws. And, you know, we got one side really great. The other side looked terrible. I brought in the fluoro, um, tried to fix it. I'm going in and out and in and out. And it's just, you know, I don't have the experience that, that Larry has over like two decades. But now, in a way, um, I don't have to, right? And that's okay, because you, you give up some of that experience, because now I can focus my career, um, just as Dr. Kazemi was talking about, in the indications and in correcting the deformity, right? And so it's just, it's a really nice um, streamlined way um, to put in your metal and then move on essentially for, for why you're doing the surgery in the first place. I'm here. You got it. Hey, Martin, before you go, uh, thank you for the demonstration. You were mentioning putting in, uh, but, oh, this is a mirror, by the way, since you yeah. can't see us. Um, you mentioning putting in multiple screws in that S2AI trajectory. Uh, what kind of length are you looking for? Uh, I know in big, uh, complex deformity cases, I do like having uh, sometimes four screws. Um, how are you going about putting those uh, adjusting compared to kind of a traditional trajectory versus uh, using uh, multiple trajectories for that S2AI placement? Yeah, so I mean, I, I think that's a great question. And in terms of the, the size and the length, I'll typically tailor it to naturally the patient's anatomy, but oftentimes, like the, the case that I showed earlier with the um, six points of fixation in the sacroilium, those two bottom screws were 10, 5, 90s, and so he, he could afford that. And then the iliac screws, typically the more traditional iliac screws for that third iliac fixation was like an 8, 5, 80. So uh, I'll, I'll match it to the patient's anatomy, but typically my diameters for S2 AIs, even if multiple, are at least nine fives. If I'm doing a single S2 AI screw, it's usually a 10 five, but um, if I'm doing multiple, they're generally about nine fives um, that I'm able to fit. And then my third one, if I, if I really need to place it or put in a kickstand rod or something, a traditional iliac trajectory ends up being like an 8580 or so. All right, thank you. So Martin, I want next year, I want it less, less than a minute. Um, <laughs> so you got some work to do, buddy. All right, I'll work on it. So our next speaker is